Jesuits uh, formed the greatest intelligence service in the world, and always have. Greetings, everyone, and welcome again to another session with Michael and Brett. Today is the Sabbath, October 28th, 2023, and it's about 11 44 a.m. here and I think if you add seven to that we get 644 in Europe where Michael's at. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we are going to embark on a little subject that Michael has put together for us in the History is an Illusion series that Michael's got. All roads lead to Rome. I think we we have covered this topic many times and you know, just to make it more clear to our our fellow common men out there and women too, that, you know, there's, there's really a lot more details to the whole topic because, uh, you know, there's, there's always some kind of counterproductive methods in the world to keep the people of God or people focused on on the word of God and and trying to stay true to the you know the God of glory right so there's a lot of obstacles that get in the way and I think that those obstacles are there to prove us worthy of either uh, redemption or of damnation and you know, we are basically under constant trial in this life, and that's what makes life so uncertain. And I hope that we can reach out to our fellow common man out there and say, hey, look, you know, you really ought to consider your religious viewpoint a little bit more, maybe, because uh, a lot of us are probably very, um, what can we say? Uh, upset with uh, the way that uh, things are going in some circles of the church. Certainly, uh, I've run into this quite a bit, Michael. Welcome, Michael. Yeah, welcome, Brett. I thought that would be a natural progression here if you go into history again, because I think that some of the listeners maybe are not uh, so broadly informed about the usual problems of the so-called mass media. And so when we are having our discussion about Bruce Lee, I thought it would be great to have a, just an explanation afterwards. And this is the explanation that William Casey of the CIA director of 1981 gave us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it uh, rings... Uh... Very true today. Well, no, our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. Yes. Or rather, everything we want the American public to believe is false. Mm -hmm. In other words, yes. the official narrative. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem in itself because uh, they take everything as granted. And uh, so we know in the case of Kennedy that nothing is uh, granted in the case of the moon landing and all the other stuff. And so therefore, maybe it is important to know that all the news has been controlled since centuries, actually. And let's try to dive in. All these uh, different uh, companies, ABC, NBC, CBS, and what else, they are just trying actually to fool you because they are just being owned or at least controlled by all these Roman Catholic papal bulls. So that is a decree on the media of social communications from the 4th of December 1963. We have talked about it elaborately in the Kennedy sessions and maybe also in the Bruce Lee sessions with all the false claims that the Catholic Church had been founded by Christ our Lord, allegedly. Mm -hmm. And uh, they claim that it would be an inherent right of the church to have at its disposal and to employ any of these media in so far as they are necessary or useful for the instruction of Christians, so-called Christians, they mean Roman Catholics, and all its effort for the welfare of souls. So that is their inherent right 
that they employ any of these media. So you know that at least officially since 1963, all that media has been controlled. We're speaking about radio, we're speaking about television, cinema, smartphones, tablets, everything that you can come up with. So therefore, what is a news agency? And I have looked it up in German. And don't worry, uh, you don't have to learn the German language, which is not that easy. <laughs> Yeah, but it's very interesting because uh, the first thing that Wikipedia tells us in that article about news and press agencies is this article handles or deals with a journalistical news agency for the secret service look for news service. Yeah, so Nachrichtendienst, Nachrichten means news, Dienst means service. This is a civil stuff, this is a journalistical news agency, but the secret news that you shall not know is the news service, which is the same as the intelligence service in English. Isn't that something? So it's both about news. Yeah, you see Nachrichten, I will have a split here. Nachrichten means news, but if it is supposed to be known by the general public, it's just a news organization or press agency, but for Geheimdienst, which means secret service, it's just news service. They are both news, but you're not supposed to know the secret things. Therefore, I have translated that article into English. So this is the official Wikipedia narrative. Hmm. And now comes English. I'm sorry, I have not pointed out here the American flag. Yeah, uh, but the English flag, because you Americans, you do not speak American, but you speak English. You speak American English. Okay, so <laughs> this is... <laughs> this is the one-to-one -one deeper translation about that German article. Oh, so about, does Australia, by the way, right? <laughs> yeah, and New Zealand and many, yeah. many, many other countries of uh, the Comfort of Nations, which belong all to the United Kingdom. And right. Queen, oh, Queen Elizabeth, not anymore, um, Prince Charles, uh, King Charles. Oh, my, my, my. I'm so old that I always want to uh, tend to say <sighs> Prince Charles. Because he was prince for, I do not know, 60 years or so. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the German explanation for the German audience, for the German broad public. Yeah, So please listen carefully. This is the news and press agency. This article is about the journalistic news organization for the secret service, the intelligence service. Ah, you see, you're not supposed to know everything. So the government or the news agencies, they have secrets. Secrets. Yeah. So they split the information, if it is supposed to be known by the general public, or better not to tell them anything or everything. News and press agencies are companies upstream of mass media that offer current news about world events for sale to relevant media companies and organizations as it did. It editorial, I'm sorry, and multimedia ready-made reports. Press and news agencies play a central role in the global flow of news. They are considered key institutions and invisible nervous systems of the media landscape. News agencies are both privileged places for knowledge production. You, you know that knowledge means science, so scientific production. And due to their global radius of action, exposed institutions for knowledge transfer or science transfer. News agencies operate as private or state-owned companies and are linked to one another through exchange agreements. Of around 140 news agencies worldwide, only 20 are free of state influence. Oh, this is what the German Wikipedia article tells you right away. So this is what you are supposed to know. And this already is very disturbing, I would say. Ten of these are in Europe and are linked together as Group 39. The majority of international news distributed on online social media platforms, TV, radio and newspapers, print in the Western Hemisphere comes from the three global news agencies. And there I thought, Brett, it would be very interesting that it is three. It's like a pagan trinity. Yes. Associated Press, AP, and Thomson Reuters of New York City and the Agence France Presse, AFP from Paris. So... We're speaking about of three. So all the other smaller agencies, like in Germany, the German press agency, the market leader in Austria, the Austria press, they are just buying their stuff from the three big ones. 
mostly. The main financial service news outlets are Reuters and Bloomberg, the Chinese state news agency Chinchua, the Russian Russia, Sevotnia, and the Quarter based Al Jazeera differ from offerings of market determining Western news agencies. What have we learned in the Bruce Lee sessions that uh, the uh, general of the Jesuits, uh, Tamburini, told us in 1720, see, sir, from this room I govern not only China but Paris and not only Paris or not only China but the entire world without anybody knowing how I do it. So you can assume at least for that quote that the world has been governed since 300 years including the news. So this is hogwash that there is an Austrian press, a German press and what else and Chinese blah 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 and Al Jazeera because I would suggest that they are all the same because we have only three global news agencies but we know about because of the quote of Tamburini that everything has been controlled uh, right from the start. So they control everything including the media. You even, even if you would believe in three global agencies, that would mean that it's a monopoly of uh, knowledge. It's not freely available that everybody can send out any journalist to investigate anything. No, no, no. It has been just controlled by these three agencies. The pioneer of the modern news agency is Charles Louis Havas, who founded the Agence or Agents Havas News in Paris in 1835. That's this very interesting date. We will co soon come to this. A forerunner of the AFP. Between 1870 and 1934, the global news market was dominated by the widely criticized Wolf Reuter Havas cartel. And now, please have your attention completely to this one sentence here, because this is what German readers in the Wikipedia, they will get to read this on Wikipedia. In Germany, between 1933 and 1944, it was primarily the news agencies that made a significant contribution to bringing the press and radio into line. And do you think that has changed? This wow. quote. Wow, this is that's really interesting because uh, I remember that uh, in 1933, wasn't it 1933 that the United States uh, had the uh, oh, emergency powers or something where they added the gold fringe to the flag, which means maritime law? Uh, forgive me for not knowing too many details about it, but I think it's about the same time. Mm -hmm, I can look it up. <clears throat> but isn't that interesting because, you know, it's really the uh, Protestants in Germany and the Protestants in the States that they want to take down, they want to take out, they want to suppress in any way possible. Because if our countries, Germany and the United States, were to really find pure religion, they would have a major problem. So it's all about suppressing the truth and keeping everyone in line and giving them false information, false doctrine, false teachings, especially when it comes to the Bible, right? So yeah, confuse them as much as possible, make it so hard for them to, you know, it's all this tradition and ritual and all this in the church. I mean, it is just beyond a mess and not even to mention the Sabbath. What did we encounter in 2020, 21, 2022 mm -hmm. about uh, bringing the press and radio into line? We have encountered that globally, yes, or worldwide, if if I would prefer a word. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's called lockstep. I think they called it back in 2000. Yeah, but. But what is it other than a war against the people if you don't supply them with the right information? Right. Right. And of course, you give them poison to boot. Yeah. Yeah, but you see that 1945 was the official end of the Second World War in Germany. Right. <laughs> so that means that means that is a method of war that they just try to control the knowledge. Yeah, and don't forget that in 1929, I think it was February 11th, that we had the Vatican uh, sign the uh, 
uh the tr- uh the treaty uh the um the Lateran treaty was it or mm-hmm. no yeah i mm-hmm. forget no mm-hmm. ladder uh, yeah there's a church of the Lateran too that no one knows about right because that's the real that's the real epicenter of catholicism in rome is the Lateran church it's not the vatican the vatican mm-hmm. is just a, a front for mm-hmm. the real church mm-hmm. and that's the Lateran church and this quote here that has been quoted in wikipedia in german which we have translated here via deeple is coming from a book from a certain andre utsulis news agencies and national socialism propaganda instruments and means of controlling the press so this means to an end is at least been publicly promoted publicly um, visible for every uh, odd adult since 1933, according to this article at least. So that means that your free press is just an illusion and we will come to this too. And well, we are speaking yeah, only about Germany. Well, yeah, they started in 1933, right, Michael? They started in Germany. In Germany, in Germany Germany, officially. Yeah. officially. In Germany, yeah. that's correct. Officially, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, that's just officially. Yeah, but uh, I think that unofficially you will see that it started yes. much sooner. Much sooner. Yeah, that's right. I'm thinking yeah. you can go way back to uh, 1870, 1869 when they started yeah. the, the first uh, uh, the first uh, Vatican Council, and they uh, they uh, created uh, uh, you know this doctrine of the infallible Pope, right? Where and now compare that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it's much more earlier, even. You will see that soon. Yeah. Mm. You, you, you see, this is just the same article from Nachrichtendienst, news service, news agency, press agency, <clears throat> in the official Wikipedia, this time not DE, not Germany, but English. Yeah. So in English, you won't hear anything about uh, secret service. A news agency is an organization that gathers news reports and sells them to subscribing news organizations. La 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 la. Just la, keep la. it real stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Even more stupid than in German. Yeah, that's right. Because Dumb because down. if I compare that to German, <laughs> this is the first sentence in Germany about news and press agency. That's right. So that means that intelligence services, SSS, who told us, William Casey, their purpose is not to kill people physically, but to lead them astray. Disinformation yeah, program. No, it, it's interesting because this official quote is actually heard, it's in, it's heard in private with yes. uh, with. Uh, I forget. Uh, was it William Casey who told this to uh, yes. to, a, to, to a journalist? Yeah. Oh, I thought he told it to the president, and the journalist overheard it. That's maybe not true. I don't know. Mm, I would have to look it up. Yeah, I thought I thought it was something so. that was overheard. It wasn't told by you know. It's it's. Um, yeah, I, I know this sounds crazy, but uh, from what I understand, it was William Casey that said that directly to the president and it was overheard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this quote is actually between the secret, you know, the mm-hmm. secret news agency in the States, let's say, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. You could call them the CIA. You could call them the. Uh, there's probably a bunch of other bunch of other ones you can think of, but uh, yeah, I mean it's it's obvious, you know, it, the the military in the states is definitely geared to be uh, driven by uh, forces that are unseen by the public. Mm-hmm. So yeah, at least that is a variable, uh, verified quote here from William Casey. That's the point. <clears throat> yeah. So they tell you more in German than they tell you in English. It's very interesting. Mm-hmm. If you gather information in the old age, in the Middle Ages, that was not via Internet, that was not via television, that was not via radio. They did it by newspapers, illustration, magazines, telegrams. What else? So therefore, you need 
printing. You need paper. Yes. You need a printing press. Mm -hmm. So I looked it up in English about the printing press, a mechanical device for applying pressure to an ink surface and la 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 la. So in Germany, so we are again to blame. So everything, <laughs> everything, every time Germany is to blame. In Germany around 4040, the goldsmith Johannes Gutenberg invented the movable type printing press, which started the printing revolution. This is the same effect. Uh, a similar effect than the digital revolution that we are encountering now, that everything is goes further away from books and reading to any so-called artificial intelligence. Google decides what you are to know and what you don't shall reveal. Or yeah, don't again, want to Michael, know. just mixing everyone up and confusing everyone so they can't think for themselves critical thinking you know this is this is the way things have been set up yeah it's a scam it's a condition that the bible could be printed <clears throat> by a certain martin luther for example i don't know why i have a sore throat at the moment i'm sorry <clears throat> but that that's the problem that's here with the printing press and not about the problem, actually, that's the good thing about the printing press, that then the Bible was getting more and more affordable and more people were able to read it and to figure out what the Roman Catholic Church actually is. And some 85 years later, Luther translated the Bible and then he printed the Bible and he was just translating the Bible and every other people also in other countries were then translating the Bible and then printing them uh, at... Uh, Affordable costs, let's uh, put it this way. So that was the revolution that the average people then could also read and figure out things. And it was not then been printed in Latin, but printed in their native languages. So that started the printing revolution. So I think that was a big threat for the people in power because then the average guy and John Doe could uh, uh, see what's really going on in the Catholic Church and what's really going on with all these emperors and all this stuff. And I think that is very interesting and very important for uh, to understand that news and knowledge has been transferred mostly by paper in the former times uh, until we have managed to have radio. I think it was in the 1910s, 1920s for a broader public and then television in the 1930s, 40s, 50s and then Internet in the 1990s. So in the former times, just information and so-called knowledge, science so-called, has been transferred on paper and then been submitted to the people and then been just being written and everybody could uh, show somebody and said, oh, look, it has been written in this book that it blah, 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 blah. So the earliest stuff uh, um, most likely came from China but then in the 15th century, around 1450 here, Johannes Gutenberg introduced the first movable type printing system in Europe. And then it went on and on, technology went uh, far ahead. And that's uh, why they could uh, make the Bible to an affordable price. And let's get back to the script then. If you are somebody in power and you don't want to reveal your secrets and you just want to have your people obey, then you don't want to feed them with all the valuable information. So therefore, you just have to do what? If you can't forbid all the printing presses, you must limit the amount of information so that the printing press just makes yellow press and entertainment and all the stuff. And so therefore, I have uh, looked it up and there are some interesting things happening, which also has an effect or had an effect on the so-called Monroe Doctrine of the United States. And these were some secret treaties. These secret treaties, they were held in 1822, the secret treaty of Verona, the control of the press, 1822. And there were other secret treaties of Vienna and Chiri about the Bible and all the stuff. And uh, later, the American states, they have just issued this Monroe Doctrine uh, forbidding any European influence in their politics. So therefore, what about the secret treaty of Rona in 1822? We're speaking close to 200 years before, two centuries ago. 
The secret treaty of Vienna, Wikipedia tells us, was a defensive alliance signed on 3rd January 1815 by France, the Austrian Empire and Great Britain. See, interesting, huh? France, where the first so-called AFP news agency has been established. It took place during the Congress of Vienna. So you see, that is the official stuff. Oh, we are just having a Congress. And then within that Congress, there is a secret treaty. Secret means that you and me are not ought to know what they have been uh, negotiated there. So officially, they tell you that the negotiations on the future of Europe following Napoleon's defeat in the War of the Sixth Coalition has been uh, dealt with. But um, the secret treaty of Verona most likely has also to do with the controlling of the press. And I'm not the one who is just claiming something, but I have just uh, looked it up in several books. The Congress of Vienna brought together the European great powers in Austria to discuss the future of Europe following the defeat of France. Yeah, but that's just only half of the truth, if uh, I would like to add something. That means that you have the great powers of Europe. Actually, what, what they just don't tell you is that it is just the Habsburgs and all the Roman Catholic and uh, Roman loving uh, emperors of Europe uh, gathered together there. Yes, so I would just uh, split the entire information because we know that this information also is controlled. Hmm. There is also some uh, journals here uh, which are just claiming oh, that, that there are no secret treaties. That's very interesting. Um, that it is a newspaper forgery. It's very interesting. Maybe you should call up the people of Wikipedia so that they delete the article. <laughs> yeah. So, um, of course, they deny that there were secret treaties and that is just any importance, but uh, I don't uh, have to buy it. No? It's very interesting when you look upon the date, Brad. Can you read that? Oh, November 22nd, 1822. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, November date, 22nd, and... 11 plus 22. <laughs> yes, yes, correctly. This is allegation here. It's been stated that, quote, unquote, an excellent example of how the most flimsy leg ends are handed faithfully down from generation to generation, how these finally distorted perspective regarding a whole series of events can be found in a secret treaty of Verona, a forged document supposedly signed by the Austrian, Russian, Prussian and French representatives at the Congress of Verona on November the 2nd, so, sorry, on November the 22nd, 1822. The acceptance of this treaty as genuine has decidedly influenced American historiography uh, relating to the European background of the Monroe Doctrine. Through its use, a legend has arisen of the complete reactionary European alliance desirous of crushing out representative government first in the Eastern Hemisphere and then in the Western. The Ford Treaty forms the keystone upon which this legend has been built. It has been used again and again in connection with the Monroe Doctrine to set off in proper color to the reactionary diplomacy of the European powers. So, to make a long story short, Secret treaties are not meant to be published in the broad audience for obvious reasons. That means that we can't know what's in them. But what very interesting is if you look upon the timeline, we talk about 1822. So, and when we talk about the Treaty of Verona, 1822, I found another link of that secret treaty which I cannot discuss because I can't know about the authenticity of it all. But what I do know is that we spoke about several books where these secret treaties are subject, and these books speak about the gathering together also of members of the Roman Catholic Church, which is very interesting because we are speaking about the Congress of Vienna, for example. Vienna is Austria, and Austria has just been infamous for being Roman Catholic to the core. It's like the northern part of Italy, if you would like to say so. And Vienna also is the capital city of Austria. And Austria is the country where former German dictator, which was an Austrian dictator, Adolf Hitler, emerged from. So then you really see and put in context that uh, Hitler came to power in Munich, which is one of the most Roman Catholic towns, and it's so far in the south that you just are very quite nearby uh, the Austrian border. 
So in that article here, Secret Treaty of Verona 1822 to 2022, it's because that article is obviously from 2022, then we just look what, or we, I'll just read what it's about about. We arrive at this important intersections in the realm of geopolitical and international dynamics. Our present era cannot be rightly understood nor the fate of America as we approach 2022, unless the chronicles of the age of Metternich are fully disclosed and apprehended. The Congress of Vienna 1815 represents reactionary forces of monarchy and imperialism as they seek to remain relevant in the face of the enormous prosperity and proliferation of representative democracy throughout the world. The nobility and royal aristocracy of Europe sought to repress popular government and republican values in Spain and Portugal, vowing to raise armies to destroy representative democratic governments by any means necessary. Oh, where have we heard that before? That's the question that I wanted to ask you. Yes, good question, Michael. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, this rings so true, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. we, we established the history of the Napoleon, Napoleonic Wars and the Illuminati conspiracy, which is of, it's of course a hoax made by Roman Catholic, uh, where is it here? Roman Catholic Alan Weishaupt and plot out of Bavaria. Yeah, yeah, what I told you, Bavaria, Roman Catholic to the core, which orchestrated the sophisticated intrigue and duplicity against the French king leading to the great terror and the collapse of the throne of France. And that was a Jesuitic play with the help of Freemasonry. The rise of Napoleon coincidence, coincides with the papal order <laughs> to extinguish the Jesuit order, just as the Congress of Vienna aligns with the restoration of the Jesuits in 1813. Mm -hmm. Napoleon had been the effective weapon of the Jesuits during their suppression and with their return in 1813. Napoleon is removed and the work of destroying absolute monarchy and the imprimatur and prerogative of the divine right of kings begins in Vienna under the scrutiny of the Grand Duke Metternich, who led to an ideological war of any nation against all democratic elections and popular government. In 1822, the high contracting powers of the Congress of Vienna in the effort to restore absolute monarchy as the basis of governments throughout the world and reasserting their territorial claims and holdings and unlimited authority as those entitled as princes and royalty. The Congress of Vienna is a repudiation of the American Congress and focuses the direct vengeance and vendetta of their black conspiracies against the United States of America. As we approach in 2022, the looming political catastrophe of Biden, the crashing anarchy overtaking our borders and the imminent implosion of the Federal Reserve dollar, we must remember the determination of this hateful adversary which had voted a perpetual and unending oath to destroy America in joining in a secret treaty of Rona, pledging their resources and wealth towards this endeavor for a long as time shall endure. We must look closely at a remarkable book by Samuel B. Morse called Foreign Conspiracies Against the Liberties of the United States. This engraved and detailed account of an intellectual who literally traveled Italy Italy and Europe in pursuit of his account published in 1835. Samuel Morse, the inventor of the telegraph, details for us the sincere hatred of the United States and all democratic governments by the imperial powers of Europe upheld in their tyranny by the doctrine of the divine rights of kings and princes. And I have to add, the divine right has been given by the papacy to this king and princes. That doctrine long espoused by the Vatican for many centuries. The notion of political liberty and individual freedom was so entirely anathema to the di dictatorial rule of absolute monarchy that the crowned heads of Europe gathered to make clandestine war against democracy. The Congress of Vienna and the secret treaty of Verona were again re-established in 1835 at the Congress of Chiri in Italy there at a nondescript Jesuit college, the royal personas and high contracting sovereigns gather to redouble their efforts and make long-term future plans to subvert all heretic governments who would not submit to the Roman papacy. I think 
he oh and, yes like the inri on top of the crucifix yeah yeah that's right nothing new under the sun michael we have to face the fact that it is close to 200 years ago mm -hmm. and this is not the stuff that our children would learn in a school system no, of the, course not, because the school t school system doesn't dare touch the topic of religion, does it? Doesn't yeah. dare. The geopolitical strategy of the international elite was permanently framed at the foundation of their efforts, which at their core would be the execution of the counter-reformation mm -hmm. and the affirmation, affirmation of, the of the Council of Trent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Affirming the Council of Trent, in other words. Yeah. Yeah. The geopolitical strategy of the international elite was permanently framed at the foundation of their efforts, which at their core would be the execution of the Counter-Reformation, ta-ta, mm. and the affirmation of the Council of Trent. That says mm. a lot. That yeah. one sentence says a lot. Mm -hmm. You don't need to read all the books, but you have to really see what does your common sense tell you when it comes down to the crisis of the global pandemic? You see, they have executed that uh, all the, the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Yes, but uh, when it comes down to controlling the information, that's my point in the, at this moment. It is just that you see that they are just all marching together in the east and oh, the west and Psalms the north and the south. Two, Psalms chapter 2. Yeah, in the east and the west and the north and the south and the white and the brown and the black and the red and male and female and 60 other genders. <laughs> yeah, right. you see that they're all marching together. So? What does your common sense tell you? You only need common sense. You don't need to study in a university where you learn Luciferian doctrine. So if you don't believe us, or if you just believe that your media tells you all the stuff that you need to know, and uh, if it would be true, then I would just remind you that there is a prominent uh, witness called John Swinton, a Scottish-American journalist, newspaper publisher and orator. He gained his greatest influence as the chief editorial writer of the New York Times during the decade of the 1860s. And uh, so that he, when he quitted, he made a very interesting speech. So 1883, sorry to interrupt you. 1883. 1883. So that, means, that means 140 years ago. 140 years ago and look at the first sentence that Brad is going to read to you. That's right. There Absolutely. is no such thing as an independent press unless it is out in country towns. You know, this morning, Michael, if you don't mind, I was just sitting here, you know, by my wood stove, waking up kind of, I had a really busy week this week, you know. Yeah, Michael, exactly. Noise, noise in the background. <laughs> <laughs> just completely wiped, you know, and I'm thinking, but why is Michael going through all this trouble right now? It's because he lives in Europe <laughs> and it's so busy there. It is so busy there. And here I am way out in the countryside in Minnesota, and it's so quiet here. Oh, yes, and, only come visit, Michael. My friend Brett secretly, <laughs> secretly is just jumping around the fire and said, nah, 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 <laughs> nah, Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but it really, I, I, I just... Like Rumpelstiltskin, I, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I can't help but think about it because, you know, there's so much turmoil going on in the world right now. But mm -hmm. anyway, let's get back to the top of the quote here. There is no such thing in America as an independent press unless it is out in country towns. You are all slaves. You know it, and I know it. 
there is not one of you who dares to express an honest opinion. If you expressed it, you would know beforehand that it would never appear in print. I'm paid $150. Oh, and by the way, back in 1820, mm -hmm. what was it? 22? 1883. Oh, 1883. $150 was quite a bit of money. Quite a bit of money here in the States. And I'm assuming this from John Swinton. He's in America. So the United States. Uh, I am paid $150. What would that translate in today's terms? I, I would love to look that up and tell you, but I don't know off the top of my head. For keeping honest opinions out of the newspaper or the papers. Keep them out of the paper I'm connected with. Others of you are paid similar salaries for doing similar things. If I should allow honest opinions to be printed in one issue of my paper, I would be like Othello before 24 hours. My occupation would be gone. The man who would be so foolish as to write honest opinions would be out on the street hunting for another job. The business of a New York journalist is to distort the truth, to lie outright, to pervert, to vilify, to fawn at the feet of mammon and to sell his country and his race for his daily bread. Or for what is about the same, his salary. You know this, and I know it. And what foolery to be toasting an independent press, quote unquote. We are the fools, the vassals of rich men behind the scenes. We are jumping jacks. They pull the strings and we dance. Our time, our talent, our lives, our possibilities are the property of other men. We are intellectual prostitutes. So you see one thing comes to another and one thing adds to another. I think that is quite clear that there is no independent press in the year 1883. And what that means actually that all the events, at least after 1883, if John Swinton is correct, they are just controlled information. So you don't know what really happened there or there or over there. You don't know because everything has been controlled. So that is to control the people, control in the democracy is quite easy. You only have to control the information because then you can steer the population in the way that you want to have a certain outcome. Right, Michael. All you have to do is know that that Jesuit oath, the extreme oath is more real and more concrete than anyone could ever imagine or admit to because that's how things are done. That's how the marketplace works. You have to conform to the will of the hierarchy. And if you don't, you're out. Just mm -hmm. as John Swinton said. Mm -hmm. It's true. Absolutely true. And I wonder what he said before and after that as well. Mm -hmm. He sounded very angry, I think, when he made that statement. Yeah, you see that that's just the quotes that we got. So we don't yeah. know what other people just had in mind because you see that all also this information is being controlled and limited. So I don't know. What I know is that I have asked you one hour ago if you know where that secret treaties have been mentioned in and you told me right from the start you told me that is from a book called a secret terrorist from bill hughes i know i can remember that uh, daryl you and me we did uh, a session or some sessions with bill hughes mm -hmm. and uh, he's he's quite a nice guy you see i know that he's just a quite nice guy and he has um, published that book and I know that he's SDA but that's not my cup of tea so and in this book the secret terrorist from Bill Hughes 
he points out actually here in page six. The high contracting parties of this compact, which were Russia, Prussia, so it means Germany, Austria, and Pope Pius VII, King of the Papal States, entered into a secret treaty that uh, he is just referring to a book of Burke McCarthy called The Suppressed Truth About the Assassination of Abraham Lincoln. It comes interesting um, for the Lutheran oh, Library. Yes, our, friend, our friend Alec. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Alec, we we have uh, a lot of uh, resources there at his at his uh, uh, web page. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then this book here from Burke McCarthy. I have uh, also looked this book from Burke McCarthy. I have looked it up. It's just on page fifteen here. Let's go to this book. The Society of Jesus, the members of which are referred to as the Jesuits, has absorbed the papacy. The society was founded by a fanatic one, Ignatius Loyola, in 1541. Uh, I think it was in 1534. In 1540 was the official papal recognition, its object being to combat the Protestant Reformation of Martin Luther of 1517. Interesting, huh? 77 years after the printing press. Loyola was the son of a prominent Spanish family who had distinguished himself as a soldier and by the immoral excess of his private life, but who, owing to an accident which maimed him, was supposed to have become converted. And during the illness which followed, the Society of Jesus was conceived in his brain, fertile with deviltry. The Society of Jesus is under the strictest military discipline due to the military training and psychology of its founder. It's absolutely commanded by the general, its head, also known as the Black Pope. The garb is always a plain black cassock. But here, permit me to present a definition of one of its eminent generals of the 17th century and which aptly describes it today. Quote, the members of the society are dispersed in every corner of the world and divided into many nations and kingdoms of the earth as the earth has limits. Divisions, however, marked only by distance of places, not of sentiment, by the difference of languages, not of affections, by the dissemblance of faces, not of manners. In that family, the Latin things at the Greek, the Portuguese as the Brazilian, the Hibernian as the Sumatran, the Spanish as the French, the English as the Flemish, and among so many different geniuses, no controversy, no contention, nothing which gives you a hint to perceive that they have more than one. Their birthplace offers them no motive of personal interest. The same aim, same conduct, same vow, which like a conjugal knot has tied them together. At the least sign, one man, the general turns and returns the entire society and shapes the revolution of so large a body. It is easy to move, but difficult to shape. With the above authentic illumination, you will be able to somewhat grasp the reason that the execution of the mandate of the Holy Alliance and secret treaty of Verona was entrusted to the members of Society of Jesus. God save the mark. And then he just quotes the Jesuitical oath on page 15, which uh, just quotes that this is then the um, the fourth Jesuitical oath that Brett just has mentioned. Mm -hmm. So basically, Michael, that sentence right there, uh, that of that uh, that last uh, paragraph uh, with the mm -hmm. above auth authentic illumination, you will yes. be able to somewhat grasp the reason that the execution of the mandate of the Holy Alliance and secret treaty of Verona was entrusted to the members of the Society of Jesus. So it's obvious it's Jesuit controlled. Right? Yeah, sure. And then you just go to this article. We can switch to Wikipedia and then we switch to Wikipedia and say Wikipedia news agency. Yeah. So then let's go to history. Yeah, you see? Havas, founded 1835 in France, now known as Agence France Presse, and as Jules Press in the United States, 1846. Yeah, 
And then you compare that and you see that there was a Congress of Chieri in 1835. Oh, how there. convenient. It was in Italy, huh? All roads lead to where? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Italy? No, Rome. That's it. You only have to use your common sense now. 1815, that was the Napoleon stuff. You see, you look up the secret treaty of Verona. 1822, and then you got the secret treaty of, what was it? Chieri. 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 Sure. Yeah, in 1835. And then you just only have to compare it to Wikipedia, to news agency, and then you see that the first news agency has been founded in 1835. I only have yes, to apply and that sense. was the original name before AFP or mm -hmm. Associated Press. It's all the same thing. Incredible, Michael. That's the point. You see that, and then uh, close to 50 years later, 1883, then uh, John Swinton said there is no independent press in America. Yeah, therefore, if you really do your research, bam, Jesuit controlled. No joke. Yeah, that's that. No, no, it's absolutely no joke. You see that it's all controlled because when you see that C19 thing, you saw that the entire press, blah, 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 in the Philippines, blah, 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 in Japan, blah, 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 in Africa, in Australia, in England, everywhere, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you will all die. Yeah, with my amateurish possibilities that I got here, yeah. You meant to say amateurish? Yes, I meant to say. Yes. Where is that article here? Mm. <laughs> Why, where is it? Ah, there is it. There, there it is, yes. Yeah, so when he said in 1883, there is no thing in America as an independent press, you just combine the dots. Mm -hmm. You just combine the dots. Reference to two books now. We had made reference to Samuel Morse. We made reference to John Swinton. And you just have to combine the dots. Or what, what's better even is if you just uh, read the Bible. That is uh, John chapter 8, verses 41 to 45. Would yeah, you try to, go ahead, Michael. Would you try to take this? Yeah, of course, of course. John chapter 8, verses 41 through 45. Maybe you got another verse which is more appropriate even. No, this is perfect. i okay. just go with it. John chapter 8, <laughs> verses 41 through 45. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they unto him, send that. then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, and ye believe me not. So whom they serve, I think it's quite obvious. And I think that is the end of this session, because it would also prove the quote of William Casey as being correct, most likely. That's why you have this Hegelian dialectic you have the Wikipedia news on the one hand and you have controlled information on the other hand. So I would suppose that the majority of all these so-called alternative press also is controlled. So in the end, there is not much except the Bible and the prayer to God, which is so it's which is 
an expression of truth. All the other stuff is just worldly stuff, it's just temporal, it just serves only the hierarchy. And I have a hard time imagining that uh, the majority of people will ever get out of that mass media system because that web is so tightly and so dense that they just think that Wikipedia, Google on that concern would tell them the absolute truth. Yeah, and I think that just uh, the best thing that you can do is to read your Bible and study history. So then you see that the Bible is correct, that the Bible always claims that uh, just the only way to the uh, to the truth and salvation is Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is the truth. And when do you see all these media agencies, press agencies, when do you see that they really speak of Jesus Christ in a positive way? When do you see that? Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. So if Jesus Christ is the truth, according to John 14, 6, then you know that all these uh, news agencies and news press agencies, organizations, and uh, that they only have one purpose, to lead you astray, to distract you. You see that uh, this information program is almost complete because you can sell the broad public everything. You can sell them the Kennedy assassination. You can sell them the summer of love. You can sell them 9-11. You can sell them everything. And each time, each time the lie gets a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. And guess what they are coming up with next? Maybe the second coming of Jesus Christ in the sky with their, all these uh, magic lanterns and uh, the third temple deception and all the stuff. So the lies get bigger and bigger and bigger until the very end. And I can only advise you to stick to the truth with this, the, the Bible and so therefore the gospel of uh, the Almighty Lord, which he has given to us since uh, thousands of years. And please stick to the Bible because everything else is just almost a waste of time and uh, so that I wanted to do that session to uh, see to point the finger to the connection between the news agencies and the secret treaties and the quote of William Casey so that you can't have any reliable information if you just do regular research on the internet it's extremely time wasting and it's just extremely tremendous uh, difficult and it gets even more difficult by implementing the so-called artificial intelligence which is just to hawks. So that is just censorship on an artificial level. So that's that's for me, uh, all for me uh, of this session, uh, handing it over to my beloved brother Brett and Maranatha. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, I think that uh, the uh, implementation of artificial intelligence is just a fancy way of saying uh, computer algorithms to do various tasks uh, through a voice controlled user interface. And that's essentially what's going on. We have uh, much more sophisticated technology that is being used for increasingly diabolical purposes. And it's more than obvious for anyone that pays any attention at all. And I would certainly hope our listeners are paying attention because we're seeing a world emerge that is just completely ready to devour any any one of us that would stand in its way like a uh, a brute beast because that's essentially what the governments are they're the beast of rome it's the roman beast nothing has changed the book of daniel only mentioned four empires and we're in the last empire, and it's been 2,000 years. And Jesus even said that, you know, all these things would come about. Matthew 24, right, Michael? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but look at this here. You see that when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a lie and the father of it. And this is disinformation. Yeah, so this is disinformation. A lie is disinformation. Right, In lie my... equals disinformation. That's yeah, right. yeah. That's and disinformation what... is what the uh, the beast is promoting and selling, and the people buy it because it's popular and it's fancy and it's 
whatever other sin you can think of, right? I mean, it's all sin in the end. We need to repent, not sin. It's about humbling yourself before your father. It's not about exalting myself above others because I am so smart, right, Michael? Mm. No, it's about humility. Humility comes before honor. It's in the Bible. So with that, we leave you and we hope that you do your own research and study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Goodbye and God bless. Till next time, God willing, Maranatha.